How's the frame on this? Frame looks good. Light's a little crazy, but we can deal with it. Here's my eyeballs. All right, guys, so today what we're doing is we are going to be working on, there's a Jeep right there on the lift, if you could see it through all the other mess. But we're gonna be solving a problem that is very inherent with these Jeeps when you decide to lift them. And it causes vibration, it causes all kinds of other crap, and it does just some really, really wild stuff to the drivetrain when you try to lift them. And that is all due to the fact that the rear drive shaft is Well, that big, that's the entire rear drive shaft. And I'll show you why this is a problem in a second. But today we're actually going to be installing a kit that remedies that problem and it's called a slip yoke eliminator. Now slip yoke eliminator does exactly that. I'll show you guys exactly what a slip yoke is. And then I'll show you what we're gonna be switching it to to alleviate the problem with drive shaft bind and U-joint bind and all that other stuff. So here is the factory setup. So normally what you have is your MP231J transfer case. You have your input side over there that connects to the transmission. And then here's your output shaft. Now the output is about six inches long or so. And then your drive shaft goes ahead and slips right on there. So now as your suspension travels, get your minds out of the gutter. As your suspension travels, the slip yoke will allow the drive shaft length to change and therefore won't bind up. Now the problem with this is that that extra six inches of length causes the drive shaft to be six inches shorter. And it is almost impossible to do one of these videos while holding something like this and not make the jokes that you guys are all thinking about right now. So get it out of your mind. We're actually doing some scientific stuff here. So basically what we need to do is we need to make our shaft longer. See what I mean? This stuff, like you can't make this stuff up. We're going to get rid of this entire section of the output shaft by utilizing this guy here. So that's gonna go inside there. And then on the end of that goes this guy right here, the fixed yoke. So instead of being way out here, like it currently is, it's going to be on the end of this. And this yoke right here will be eh, right about here. So you lose that entire bit and you can add that to the drive shaft and get yourself a longer shaft. That's what she said. So with that being said, now we're going to lengthen the drive shaft by about six inches. And by doing that, it's going to allow us to run a little bit steeper of an angle with the drive shaft in the lift kit and doing a high clearance skid plate and all that other stuff. Doing it is actually not that difficult. And the drive shaft that we're going to be using has a normal CV joint on one side or a normal U joint on one side and what they call a double cardon on the other side. And I can actually show you what a double, a double cardon joint looks like. So stay right there. So this is the front drive shaft. That is a normal U joint back and forth, you know, runs this way and that way. This side, however, is a double cardon joint. Now the double cardon, you can see moves almost like a constant velocity joint. It's got two U-joints in it with a center pivot ball so that you can get a range of motion. We're going to be doing that in the rear as well. Again with the jokes. And now if you look at the rear shaft, you can see it's just got a single U-joint here, single U-joint here. So when we replace everything, we're going to be going with a single U-joint at the axle and a double cardon at the transfer case and this drive shaft is literally going to be another six to eight inches longer than this one currently is. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to set you guys up so that you're, you're looking straight down on top of this. And I'll be able to show you guys step by step how this is done. It's really not that difficult. You just need some basic tools and a little bit of knowledge. And this video should help you out and you'll be able to, uh, to do a slip yoke eliminator but we can get you in there. So the first thing we're gonna do is we gotta flip this around 
and we've got to take off this guy, which is the front yoke. Now it's just a 28 millimeter that we're going to use on our Milwaukee. And if you're strung like bull, you can just hold on to that thing while you crank it off. Guys, this video is going to be full of jokes, so prepare yourselves. So we pull the front yoke off. Then we'll spin this around and we're going to stand this thing up. And it just so happens that I have a piece of steel that holds it up perfectly. It's just the right length. <laughs> Again, remember, childish jokes coming at you. So we'll get that on there. And now we have to pull off this tail housing section. So we're going to basically just take out the 10 millimeter bolts. We have to take out the speed sensor. The speed sensor has a 13 millimeter bolt holding it in. I'm going to grab some paper towels. Speed sensor in place. And we'll get our, our little clip out of there. Now we can hopefully, there we go, wiggle that and take out our speed sensor. The speed sensor is literally just the speed sensor. Don't know how better to explain that one. Now we're going to go ahead and take out these 10 millimeter bolts that are all the way around this tail housing. Now we're going to need a little tappy tap tap and a screwdriver to get this off because it's RTV'd on there. But we want to kind of make sure you just you know clean this thing off a little bit so that you don't dump all this shit into the transfer case. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, so now we're going to tap this housing off. And you'll be able to hear once it gives up because it'll kind of pop a little bit. There we go. See the tone will change. All right, so once we get that seal out, there's actually a snap ring that sits right in here that we're going to have to take out. And it's on the output shaft. It's a little ring right about here. You guys hopefully will be able to see that. Let me go grab some snap ring pliers. or we can curse it out for the next three hours because that's about what we're gonna do. There we go. All right, so this snap ring just has some sharp edges. There's no actual holes in it to fit your snap ring pliers. So they do make specific pliers that have that little hole or that little groove to grab onto this ring, but you can get it with just about anything. You can even get it with screwdrivers if you need to. So now, we can just lift off our tail housing completely, put that off to the side, and then that exposes our shift rod along with our oil pump. Now the oil pump, and I'll try to zoom in on this for you, the oil pump has a pickup tube right in the bottom of it, right about here. And that's going to be super, super important to reinstall when we put all this back together. Otherwise, you're going to smoke the transfer case. So now we can go ahead and lift out our pump. We lift it up on the top first, slide it back, and then it'll lift right off and we can put that to the side. And now you see this little guy right here. 
that little tube has to go back into the pump when you put this thing back together. If it doesn't go back in the pump, you're, uh, you're gonna blow your transfer case up. All right, so now with that all done, now we can take out all of our 15 millimeter bolts and our one 10 point or 12 point 10 millimeter. 12 point 10 millimeters, kind of like a security bolt. All right, so you got that one out. Now we can go around with our 15 and take out all the perimeter bolts. And just take note of where all your little brackets and stuff like that are. Just try not to make this thing fall over on us. Take note that the bolts in the corners are a little bit longer and they have a washer. There's one with a washer on this side and one with a washer on the other side. That's where the dowel pins are. Okay. Now that all our bolts are out, just double check so that you're not prying against bolts. And there's usually a spot right here, right next to the dowel pin, where you can get a very small screwdriver in and just pop this up. And do the same thing all the way around. There's another dowel pin up on top here. There's also a slot for the screwdriver. And then we can go ahead and lift the case right off put that to the side here's our pickup tube that i was talking about for the oil you're going to want to pop that right back into its little position right here just for safekeeping and now we are inside of our transfer case and you see guys there's no gaskets on any of this stuff it's all just rtv and the rtv usually comes off pretty easy but we're going to go ahead and just make sure before we throw this thing back together that all this RTV is out of here. Because again, when it comes down to the oil pump, you're not going to want any of this RTV plugging up your oil pump or getting into your gears or getting into anything. Because again, you'll destroy the transfer case. And be careful too when you're doing this, guys. This aluminum. These castings are like jagged bread knives. They will literally cut you up like you wouldn't believe. So you can see how easy that RTV comes off of there. You can just peel it right off. And you don't want to use any sort of like whizzy wheels or anything like that on this because it is a machine surface and it's relying solely on RTV to seal it. So there's a, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's like a machine pattern in there and that pattern is what holds onto the RTV and keeps everything sealed up. So it's one thing you definitely don't want to get rid of that seal. Because otherwise you'll have a very leaky transfer case, which is never fun. <coughs> okay, so the next step is taking stock of everything that you don't want to lose or anything that you don't want to mess up. So now's a good time to start taking pictures or videos or whatever you might need to do to make sure that you get everything back the way that it came apart. Now I've done probably a hundred of these things, so I'm pretty comfortable in uh, doing them. So what we're gonna do first is we need to remove our front drive shaft output and that just pulls straight up but what we're going to do is we're going to pull this output shaft straight up as well as pulling the passenger one up and then we can tilt this and move the chain get the chain and the front one out take the chain off because actually in this one we are replacing this chain with a brandy new one 
so we don't need this chain and while you're in here guys you can check you know all these bearings make sure that they look good make sure that they feel good and that they're getting oil sometimes you can get into a situation where they're not getting any oil so now we're going to take the spring off of the shift fork we'll put that aside and now we're going to pull out the main output shaft and that'll slide right out of there and now what we have to do and I'll probably move the rest of this out of the way is we have to take all of these gears off of this output shaft and they need to go on to the new one so let's move this out of the way and we'll set up to start doing all this gear stuff okay so now that we clean this stuff up again now's a good time to take a picture so if we look these shafts are both pretty much the same until you see how much length you're gaining with this one versus the other one so now we're going to go ahead and start tearing this thing down and usually what i do is i stuff it in the end of this so that it stands up ish then grab our snap ring pliers and we have another one of those fun snap rings managed to get that snap ring off figured out what the problem was it was installed with the bevel in the incorrect position we couldn't get a bite on it so now we're going to take these gears off flip them around take this one off and guys on this one on some of the earlier model mp231s there was a needle bearing in here that's going to need to be removed to actually install it on the new shaft but this is a newer style so we're good so we're going to take this off flip it over put it down where it belongs and then this is our old output shaft and this is our new one so you can see the difference right there pretty huge difference actually so now we're going to toss this one not literally because we'll break something and we are literally going to take this guy put him down in here same same take our paper towel and make sure that the surfaces are pretty clean and then we're going to go ahead and make sure these are clean we'll get a little bit of trans fluid out of the transfer case just give this a little bit of lubrication you know you don't want your shaft to be dry and then we can take our gear first gear flip it back over set it down make sure it spins good make sure you didn't miss any thrust washers if there were any and in our particular case there are no thrust washers down in between here so we can install that gear and then we can go ahead and rotate this one back over again set that one down until our splines line up like so slide that down and then in the kit you get a nice brandy new snap ring which is right here and if you look the bevel so these edges right here are not only beveled in that way but they're beveled down that way on both sides so grabbing them with snap ring pliers is supposed to be easy as that and then it will help you slide everything down in place if it's installed improperly like ours was from the factory it was upside down then you're going to have a problem like we did taking it off okay now you want to make sure that it snaps into place just like that and make sure that our bottom gear still spins and that everything in here is clean clean So now on this one, and I'll show you a little bit of a difference here between the 
two of them is if you notice there's something missing on this one that is located on the other one and that would be the speedometer drive gear so your speed sensor comes in at an angle and sits on your drive gear like that now on this shaft we don't have that it's missing that's what this guy's for so we're going to install this in the place of this and then with our housing, it actually compensates by moving the speed sensor out that way, just a hair, so that we can utilize this larger diameter drive gear. Okay, so now that we have our transfer case front half back, we're gonna go ahead and drop everything in. You wanna make sure on these, when this gear, this is a, the selector when it pops out you want to check the actual little plastic pieces in here these are what help the selector not destroy the gear when they're selecting four-wheel drive two-wheel drive all that make sure that these don't pop off because they can pop off and just make sure that your ring sets in there like it's supposed to and now we can take our new output setup and we can drop it right down in. Make sure we line everything up. And there it is. So now after we do that, we can grab our new chain. And grab our front output shaft. Now the front output shaft, you're gonna to wanna to put the chain on it first like so and then start to set it in place and what you're going to have to do to get this to work is just kind of pull up on your output shaft a little bit just to get the chain and the front sprocket enough space to slide in and then you're good so we can make sure all that stuff spins nice, nice, and we're good. So now everything we need here is installed. Everything is good to go. All we're gonna have to do now is RTV this and put the cover back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we put our selector spring back in. And we're gonna get some RTV. We're gonna RTV this up, put the top case back on, and uh, we'll be back in a sec. Okay, so we have our little bit of RTV on the case. Everything's been cleaned up. For those of you that are watching carefully, you'll notice the mistake I made, and you'll see that I've corrected it. For those of you not paying attention, well, then I did nothing wrong. So we're gonna go ahead and just clean up the outside of this case here a little bit, quick-like so that there's no issue. All right, so now that we've got our a little bit of RTV on there, we can go ahead and install it. One thing you wanna make sure of is that you've got your screen in here with your pickup tube and when you install this, you're gonna to wanna to hold on to it because it's gonna to wanna to fall apart. So you can sneak this down, line up your front output, line up your shift fork. Once you've got that lined up, everything should drop right into place. You can line your dowels up and then give it a little bit of a tap. Just kind of seat everything. And then as far as tightening goes, we got our one bolt with a washer that goes in that dowel pin, the other bolt with the washer in that dowel pin. Then we can put all the rest of our bolts in. And I like to use the, you know, one to two ugga dugga method when tightening all this stuff up. So we'll just kind of go in a crisscross.
And then our little 10 mil 12 point. There we go. Everything's nice and tight. Go ahead and we'll leave any excess little RTV that's squeezed out around the edges for better sealing. And we can kind of move this a little bit more towards us here. And now we can install our oil pump. And again, remember, this is the little section that that tube goes into. So we're going to want to set it down on here. And then the easiest thing I found is to grab like a little pick or something like that and just pick this tube up. And you should be able to set it in there. It takes a little bit to get it snuck in there, but once it's in, it pops in and it stays there and it's actually got a bit of a retention system down below it that's not gonna allow it to come out. So now our pump is in. We can pop our snap ring on. It goes down over the pump. All right, so the next step in the process is to install the tail housing. And we're gonna be using the, the Rugged Ridge tail housing here, which replaces the other stuff. So we're gonna do the same thing again and put a thin bead of RTV around it and now we can drop the tail housing in place and you're gonna feel it slot down into the pump there it is And then once it's slotted down in there, you can rotate it so that it fits perfectly. Give it some taps just to seat it. And then we can put all our 10 millimeter bolts back in. Get those started by hand. All right, so now all we have to do is put the yoke on. Now, putting the yoke on will pull this shaft up and into its correct position up against the back side of this bearing. So that will align all of the shafting inside and make sure everything is good. And once we put this yoke on, we can go through and shift through all the different modes of this transfer case to make sure 100% that we have everything good and that our shift shaft fork fork shaft thing is coming through where it needs to come through. I'm getting completely out of sorts here, but you don't want to get this down in there. Make sure it's seated. And then there's these neat little seals that go into these. And if you don't put these in, I guarantee you your transfer case is going to leak from a very weird spot. So it's a little star seal that literally fits right down inside the splines of the yoke. And that's on the front and the rear. And what it does is it seals the splines to the shaft so that you don't have any leakage. So we'll go ahead and get this 
started on here. And I always like to run the first bunch of threads by hand because we don't want any cross threading on the output shaft. So we'll go ahead and run this down slowly. Alright, so we've got that run down. And again, Ugga Dugga method. Okay. So we gave that the Ugga Duggas that we need. The seal is in, the nut is on, so everything is good there. Now, before we go any further, we're going to take this off of our little setup we got. We're going to tip it back to normal and we're going to go ahead and spin make sure nothing's binding nothing's grinding we have input and output we're good we're currently in neutral so our front is spinning freely now we're going to shift this down into four high now we want to make sure we have four wheel drive high which we'll just shift down quick. That's four wheel drive high right there. Now we'll take the front yoke quickly and just, we've got a lock, we're good. Now we can go neutral, which I can spin the output without it spinning anything front or rear, and then four low. So we're good. Back to neutral, back to four high, back to two, and we are golden. So now we can install our plug back here because one of the things you need to look out for, and I'll throw this back up there so you guys can see it. And I'll try to zoom in on it for you if we don't drop this first. Inside here, is the shaft that holds the shift fork and when you put this in four-wheel drive that shaft will literally come up to almost the very top of here so you need to ensure that that shaft is not too long and it's not going to bind some of the older transfer cases had a longer stick out and you would have to cut that down just a hair so now that we know that we're good there can pop our little plug in take it out of four-wheel drive here there we go can pop our little plug in and we'll tighten that down when we get it back on the truck set this back down and we're going to go ahead and pop in our gear Now we can stick our 13 mil bolt back in there. That'll hold that guy down. And now the last step is we literally put the front yoke back on. Again, the front yoke gets the same style little gasket that the rear one did. See? That little guy right there. So we'll slide that in and we'll make sure that it sits in the splines properly. There we go. Now we can put our nut back on there. And no, you can't put that seal in before you put the yoke on. It'll just, uh, 
it'll just push the, the gasket right back out. Alrighty, there's that one. And now, all we gotta do is put it back in the car, fill it with fluid, and it's good. Okay, so, wow, you guys are far away. So, that's pretty much it when it comes to doing a slip yoke eliminator on these things. They're really not all that hard, but the one thing you're gonna wanna make sure that you do is do this without any distraction whatsoever. The biggest problem that I have a lot of times when I'm doing stuff like this is you get distracted and people come and talk to you and your phone's ringing and shut everything off because there's such little intricate detail in these things. Follow the instructions. Take a look at the exploded view on these things if you need to. You know, I'll put that in frame so you guys can see it. Pause it, blow it up if you need to. But one of the biggest things you're gonna to wanna to be aware of is that you need to pay attention when you're doing these things. Now, if you guys noticed, I did make a mistake. And that mistake was that I put on the speedometer gear before I put the pump on. You can't do that. You have to put the pump on and then the speedometer gear. It's not like that with the original shaft because the speedometer gear is much smaller. So that's one thing to take into consideration is that I've done a hundred of these and I made that simple mistake because I'm distracted with the filming. So take your time, knock it out, and this is what you'll end up with. So now we have a place where we can actually bolt a drive shaft directly to this. And that drive shaft will be a good six to eight inches longer than what it was with the original setup in here. So, all right, so these kits are manufactured by several, these kits are made by several individual companies. Um, this particular one is made by Rugged Ridge. There's one by Advanced Adapters, which is a little bit more expensive. There's several companies that sell the kits. Summit sells the kits. You know, all your four-wheel drive off-road places sell the kits. But whichever one you choose, they're all going to be about the same. This one I noticed had a little bit of a binding issue where the shift fork comes through. Um, and I had to rotate the tail housing just a hair to get it to not bind. That's part of the casting issues with the aftermarket stuff and whatever else. But... If you get everything right, it shifts through, everything's good, then you're golden. So, hope you guys enjoyed that video. I know we haven't done one of these on the channel yet. You guys get the point. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you guys gained a little bit of knowledge, and I hope you guys are you know, willing to tackle something like this on your own. So, we're going to get back to putting this thing back in the Jeep, filling it with fluid, and finishing up what we have to do on that. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great night, everybody.